Okay, so we have this formula here, and this actually is the formula uh, in physics between the force of the gravitational force between two objects. So let's say you have the moon, and here is the Earth, and we want to calculate the gravitational force, right? The the moon is spinning around the Earth because of gravity. This is actually the formula that uh, describes that um, force. Okay, so this is the gravitational force between uh, two objects. Now, I don't want to go heavy duty into this, but basically, if you're taking science, you're going to be using algebra, right? So it's very, very important that you have these foundational algebra skills. So this particular formula, again, is the uh, formula to calculate the force between two objects. And uh, it's described as F, or the uh, force of gravitation, is equal to the gravitational constant or the constant of gravitation times m1, that's the mass of one object, times the mass of the second object, divided by the radius squared. Matter of fact, let me just draw this out real quick. So here I have m1, here I have m2, this is the mass of our two objects, and then they are, one's orbiting around the other, so there's a radius here, okay, so it's kind of like forming a circle, it's going round and round, and then we can, uh, we're trying to calculate the gravitational force, right? What kind of pull this bigger object is having on this smaller object. So this is physics, and if you haven't taken physics, physics or considering taking physics, I would definitely suggest that you uh, take the physics. It's an, an awesome course. Um, I think everyone should take physics. You probably had like physical science as a basic, you know, uh, science course, maybe in middle school or maybe high school. But if you can actually take a full physics course, I think you will love it. Okay. But in order to do well in physics and other mathematics, you're going to have to know some algebra. And we're going to practice algebra uh, by dealing with this equation or this formula. And we want to solve for M2. Okay. So in other words, this formula is uh, the force is equal to all this stuff. I want you to uh, rewrite this formula where it's M2 is equal to whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to have to shuffle all of these things around using your awesome algebra skills to solve for M2. So we're going to solve for the variable, and I'm going to get into exactly how we do this here in just one second. Now, of course, if you think you can do it, I would say pause the video and see what you can come up with. But I'm going to explain this precisely in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I'm, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. Uh, I focus really on middle, high school, and college level mathematics, so from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything else between. So if you're taking any course in that level, I can help you get through it. Also, if you're taking any exam or any test that has math on it, so like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. It will be an EOC exam. I could help you prepare and pass that exam, at least the math section of it. If you homeschool, I have a great homeschool uh, math program. And if you need math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Hopefully you don't need any notes because if you're a math student, and I've been teaching math for decades, the most crucial part of learning is taking great math notes. So hopefully you don't need my math notes, but if you're in a jam and you really need something to study from, uh, you can use my math notes. Okay, so let's get into this problem. I want you to uh, solve for M2. If you think you could do it, go ahead and pause the video and uh, work on it, but I'm gonna get into it right now. All right, so let's just take a look at a more basic example. So here is another physics formula. This is force is equal to mass times acceleration. If I said solve for A, okay, in this particular uh, problem, well, how do we do that? Well, you can see here's the answer, but effectively what you're gonna do, if I'm solving for A, if I wanna rewrite this formula in terms of A, well, you wanna think of A as the only variable. You want to think of M and F, for example, as um, as numbers. So for example, let's say, let's just make up some numbers for F and M. So let's say that's 10 for F, okay? And then maybe M is like two. I'm just making numbers up and here's A, okay? Because I'm solving for A, I'm going to treat A as uh, a variable and I'm going to treat M and F as a number, okay? Or numbers. So 
what do we do here? Well, you could remember your basic algebra to solve for a, I just need to divide both sides of the equation by two. So 10 divided by two, that's what a is equal to. And you can see here, instead of 10 and two, I have F and M. Okay. So this is what we call in algebra is solving for a, um, a literal, um, lit solving literal equations, solving for a specific variable. This is a critical skill. It comes up in all sorts of areas, and it's a, a particular um, place that I feel a lot of um, what I've seen over decades of teaching mathematics that a lot of students struggle with. Okay, that's why I'm making this video because we need to kind of practice this. All right, so if you understand this, well, then you should be able to do this problem because it's effectively the same type of scenario. We're going to have to do a little bit more work here. But I want to solve for M2. I want to rewrite this equation uh, in terms of M2. So to do that, I'm going to think of F, G, M1, and R squared kind of as numbers. So if you want to kind of plug in some number values and just think about what you would do, that could help you out. Okay, so I'm going to get into the solution right now. And you're going to be surprised that this is not that difficult. All right, so first thing that you want to recognize is that this is uh, one fraction equal to another fraction. So you're saying, what do you mean? This is a, you could see that this is a fraction, okay? We call this a um, rational expression. It's a fraction with variables, but it, it, it's a fraction. So f, we can write anything as a fraction, f over one. So if I have this equation two or x over two is equal to three fifths, okay? Look here, I have one fraction equal to another fraction. This is what we call a proportion. I can always use the cross product. This is the easiest way to do this. So five times X, okay, is equal to two times three, that's six. So X would be equal to six divided by five, okay? Super easy. When you have one e uh, fraction equal to another fraction, I could just uh, use the cross product to solve. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm like, oh, I have F, but I can kind of fix this guy up and just think of this as F over one. And I'm like, oh, I could just do the cross product to solve. So that's where you want to uh, take this problem initially so we can get rid of these fractions. So we have f times r squared. f times r squared is going to be f times r squared. And then 1 times g times m1, m2 is this. Okay, so that's how I got that. Remember, you know, always be on the lookout in algebra with one equation or one fraction equal to another fraction. Uh, think of those as proportions. It's super easy. Okay, so this is really the key to unlocking this problem. Again, we want to solve for M2, right? So I'm going to think of this as uh, the only uh, variable. So G times M1, that could be like 2 times 3. This is just a coefficient, okay? And here I have F times R squared. This is just like any two numbers. So let's say I had, uh, let's make something up. Let's say I had 10 times 3 is equal to, this is two numbers, maybe... 2 times 4 times m2, okay? You see what's going on? I just have, we're thinking of this, these two things as just two values, all right? So like 2 and 4, and then here, this is two values right here. 10, don't think about the r squared, don't worry about that. That could be just, it's still a number, it's still a value. So this would be 30 over 2 times 4, that's 8 times m2. So to get to my m2, I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by 8. And that's effectively what we're going to do here. So I have this to get my M2 by itself. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by G uh, M1. Okay, so G times M1, and there you go. That's it. So you're like, wow, that's it. That's as uh, I thought it was going to be much more complex. If you got this right, I must give you. Well, I got to give you a better happy face than that. Let me give you a nice happy face with an A plus and 100%. Very very good. Okay, this stuff doesn't have to be complicated. And uh, this is it. This is what M2 is equal to. So we re, uh, re, uh, rewrote this formula, okay, for the gravitational force in terms of M2. So if I wanted to find, for example, the mass of one of the, you know, um, objects, okay, involved in some sort of problem, I would have to solve for M2. And here it is. But the bottom line is that you need to be very, very comfortable working with solving for particular variables in algebra, okay? And it comes up in science, physics, and in algebra itself. If you can't do this, you're going to have a very difficult time passing algebra. So, you know, you want to start off by practicing these more basic problems and then start moving up to more challenging problems. This one actually is not that difficult. Don't let the um, 
variables, by the way, kind of throw you off, like these little uh, subscripts, M1, M2. I mean, this looks kind of fancy or scary, but they're still just variables, okay? All right, so hopefully this video was a good little review for you, and if that was the case, uh, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing a bit on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, videos, basic to advanced mathematics on my channel. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content that I've posted and I'm gonna be posting new material all the time because I'm passionate about trying to teach math in a clear and understandable way. And uh, again, you know, you can do this stuff, right? So no one should be struggling in math. If you're having a tough time in math, first things first, uh, start taking better math notes and uh, talk to your math teacher. But if you need additional help beyond that, you know, and you like my teaching style, you know, please take advantage of my content, my videos, because that's why I make this, make this stuff, all right? It's been, you know, my kind of uh, passion, and I will continue to teach mathematics because I will never run out of math problems to solve. But my best math help will be within my math help program. And uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.